So I'm getting ready to build my own theater and I want to put in an acoustically transparent screen. So of course I scoured the internet and I went to some of my favorite sites to look for these screens. And sure enough, the basic 100 inch screen for one of my favorite companies is over a thousand dollars. And I got to thinking, what if I only had $150? Could I build an acoustically transparent screen for $150? Yes, I can. And I'm going to show you how you can do it as well. Now, the cool thing about building an acoustically transparent screen like this is it doesn't take very many tools. Uh, you really just need some very basic tools. You need some type of a saw. Now, that could be something as simple as a, a circular saw, or it, it can be even a miter box, or it can be a miter saw. But that's pretty much the only thing you need to cut with. You're also going to want some type of wood glue. I use Tight Bond 2. And you're also going to need a staple gun. And one of the things that I like to use, I guess you don't necessarily need to, are some corner clamps, but they really come in handy for a build like this. Now those are the only things that you have to have, although depending on what type of velvet you're going to use, you might end up using some type of spray glue like 3M77 as well. And we're also going to need some material, but before we talk about the material, let's kind of talk to you what an acoustically transparent screen is, just in case you well, don't know. Basically what an acoustically transparent screen is, is a screen that allows your acoustics to pass through that screen, meaning that you can stick your speakers behind the screen and all you see is picture. All your speakers are hidden behind that screen. And it makes for a much more enjoyable movie experience, at least in my opinion, especially with vocals, because vocals are coming directly out of the screen right from the center, which is where you expect your vocals to be coming from instead of above or below. It really does make it feel like the people are talking in the room. And to me, that just really makes the movie experience. We know that we can't just use any fabric for this. We need to use some type of acoustically transparent fabric. Now, the great thing is acoustically transparent fabric really isn't that expensive. In fact, it's not even that unique. You can get it at your local fabric store. In fact, one of the main DIY materials used is spandex. And all you need is some type of white spandex to reflect that light back to you. It's pretty simple. Now, some people will choose to go with a like gray spandex. And the reason why they would do that is if they have like an LCD projector or a DILA projector that doesn't do as good in blacks, by doing a gray screen, they can actually get deeper, darker blacks. Of course, they do sacrifice their whites. So really, that's going to be up to you. And if you're not sure what color to get, just buy a couple sample pieces, bring them home and test them with your projector. It's pretty simple to do. Not to mention, the fabric is so cheap, you can switch it out really at any time. Now, you don't have to use DIY spandex. You can actually use the same material that you would on a high-end screen, and that's what I'm doing in this video. There's a company called Seymour AV, and they make very high-end acoustically transparent screens. Well, it, it screens in general. They have different types of fabric, and one of my favorites is their Center Stage UF fabric. Now, that fabric allows you to get very close before uh, you see the perforations in the screen that allow the sound to pass through. And for me, that's just really important because my room is relatively small. And to buy this screen already built is about $1,000. It's a little over $1,000. Now, to buy that same material, I need about four yards for the size screen that I'm using. And that comes out to be about $56. That's it. Now, that's not my only expense, of course. I still have to buy some wood for the frame. And we'll say about $50 on the high end. And then the other thing that you're going to need is some type of velvet. And that's because we are going to be building a frame that goes on the outside of this screen. And the reason why we're doing that is, well, believe it or not, some of your projector will bleed off of the screen. We want to make sure that that light bleed doesn't reflect back to us. So we're going to use velvet to deaden that. That's all the materials that we need for this build. So with that being said, let's get started. Now, for this particular project, I chose around a 100-inch screen. Of course, if you're going to be using a bigger screen, then it might cost you a little bit more money for fabric and materials and things of that nature. Now, some of you may not know exactly what size screen you want. Don't worry about it. You can go to this online calculator and you can type in either your width, your height, or your diagonal. And by typing that in, it's going to give you your other two dimensions. Now you can start building your screen based off of that. Now, keep in mind when it's giving you these dimensions, which most people are going to be building a 16 by 9 screen, which is, well, what standard televisions are. 
when you build this screen, when it's giving you these dimensions, those are the internal dimensions. You're gonna have a frame that's a little bit larger than that. So if, for example, you're using a three inch frame, that three inch frame on the outside will add, well, an additional six inches to your screen size. Don't forget to take your frame into account. Now that we got this figured out, we're just gonna mark the inside diagonals of this and cut at 45 degree angles. Now you could tee these technically if you really want to, I just like the 45 degree angle myself. Now that we have those cut, basically we just need to glue these together. And really it's as easy as just putting some corner clamps down and throwing some wood glue on there. And you could also throw some staples in there as well if you want for a good measure, just so those corners are really well secured. Now if you have something like a Craig jig and you'd rather use something like that, that's also something you could use. The biggest thing is making sure the wood is level when you're gluing this together. You just don't want this to be uneven. Now, after we glue this together, we're gonna go ahead and put on our velvet. Now, I used a spray glue velvet, and I actually got the velvet directly from Seymour. And this was really good velvet, and I got about four yards of this. And once again, this cost me about $50. I think it was $52. So, you know, we're about $108 plus our wood. So we'll, we'll say around $150 total in this project right now. Now I did spray glue this on there. And of course I have the spray glue for pretty much all my projects that I do. It comes in handy. I will say that honestly wasn't my favorite thing to do. If I had to do it again, I probably would have just went with some of the stick-on stuff that you can buy right off Amazon. It's much easier to do, and you get, well, I think a more professional look at the end. Just make sure not to cheap out and get something somewhat nice. And honestly, you can save a little bit more money if you get stick-on as well. But what you're going to do is go ahead and stick this on on all four pieces of wood. Now, once everything dries or is stuck to each other, we can move on to the fabric. The most important thing right now is to lay this material out straight. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this out on all four corners, make sure that it stretches there. And once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and start stapling one of the corners and go all the way down the side. Once we go all the way down the side, we're gonna make sure that everything stays nice and even as we continue to go around and staple the rest of the sides. Basically, we don't wanna see any waves in the screen because we've been pulling too tight. Now, this is a question that people always have is how tight do you pull? Well, you pull tight enough just to make it taut. You don't need to really stretch it out, but you do need to stretch it out enough that it stays taut. Now, what I did is I just stapled this all around. And once that was finished, well, believe it or not, your screen is done. If you wanted to add more bracing, you could. You could add some rear vertical bracing to uh, reinforce the screen if necessary. But in this particular case, and this screen size, I didn't really need that. Now, all you need to do is decide how to hang it. Some people are gonna use a French cleat. So other people will actually use a big long piano hinges. Really, it's completely up to you on how you want to hang it. Now it's done and you can enjoy your movies. And the great thing about this is it really only took us a couple hours to do. We'll just call it a day project just to be safe. And it saved you, or saved me at least, about $900 just by doing it myself. That, to me, was definitely worth it. And now I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the movies that well, I wanted to in the first place. Now, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to share it with your friends. And if you really like this video and you want to see more content like it, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get instant notification. All right, guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.